It's week 10 of the National Football League, and it's brought to you by EA Sports. It's the Cavs and the Elks, and it comes your way next. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Today we hit double digits, week 10, and we've got a good one in store, as it'll be the Caps of Paris taking on the Elks of Anchorage. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and partner, look at this Anchorage team entering play. They come in losers of two straight, so they're trying to right the ship here a little bit. They're teetering a little bit, aren't they? And now things could really go south if they lose this game, so they understand the importance of playing well and stopping this streak. Meanwhile, for our visiting Parisian ball club, they've certainly found their groove of late, winners of five in a row. And I think the Scott... The shadow's starting to get a bit longer. Week 10 of the NFL season is here, and we're underway on EA Sports. And we will not get a run back here to start. It's a touchback, and it will come out to the 25. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. And they'll be let out by their left-handed quarterback. We're seeing it more and more in this league, how teams love to have athletes back there taking the snaps, guys who can throw it and move around and get yards with their legs if needed. He's one of the best examples that we see out there right now. He can throw for hundreds of yards one week and then run for 100 plus the next. He adds an extra dimension that really confounds defenses when he puts it all together. The numbers for him from a week ago, 22 carries, 55 yards and a touchdown. Well, to no one's surprise, he gets an early rep right there and they've been playing their best ball of the season as they built this winning streak. And that includes the ground game, where he's kept the offense productive and put them in position to win ball games. The question now is, can this defense that he's facing do what others haven't and finally put a stop to this streak? Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. An early tough test on the opening drive. This is third and eight. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. That was their first third down try of the game, and clearly something was off in the execution of that play. Good news, they've got a whole game left to clean that up and start clicking on those key third down throws. Now on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. Fielded at the 33. They call that a punt of 38 yards officially, and they will take over first and 10. So now we'll get a look at the other offensive unit as they come out for their first possession. And a glance here at their quarterback standing six foot three. Well, he did go two and two in the last ball game. Well, actually, he went two, two, and one, with the one being the victory. Yeah. That's the bottom line there. But wasn't it funny at practice? He, he threw one when we were watching through an interception, and the defense got out of him a little bit. Good naturedly, but it let him know you got to cut down those interceptions. We can't bail you out all the time. Yeah, two touchdowns, two picks. But as you said, they got the win in that effort last week. It's a good acceleration there as he's across midfield to the 48-yard line. 12 yards there and a first down. How best to describe that one? I'd say right down Broadway on that run. A straight-ahead running. I think that that might be something we see a lot of between the tackles today. Well, he's enjoying things so far here this afternoon. Sees a crease and bursts through it for a solid game. These are his numbers from last week's contest. 18 carries, 75 yards. And those numbers have both he and his blockers motivated this week. They saw that yardage total climbing, but stopped short of 100. Every one of them has to be driven this week to help him reach the century mark. And he'll be brought down at about the 42. And CD, you look at this defense, you know, what kind of pressure are they under trying to stop a team that has won five games in a row? Well, to me, it makes their job harder because you know you're going up against an offense that's playing at an elite level, and sometimes you can get too caught up in trying to play the perfect game. You're trying to be too precise, too fine, instead of just letting it rip, and I think that's more the priority than trying to be absolutely perfect. So they bring out their punter as he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt. 
This one will sail out of bounds. It'll depend on the spot here. And the side judge says that went out at the seven-yard line. Back onto the field comes this offense, ready for their second drive. Well, they're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. And they'll keep leaning on the running game. Back to the ground. And not much there at all as he'll get this only up to about the 11. Now third down is looming. A pickup of two on first down and just one yard there. He'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. Looks like a second empty possession to start the game and certainly not the way you want to start when you come in off of a loss last week. Every team talks about starting fast. They're hoping on their next possession it can be a delayed fast start and get them going. Now a fair catch called for and made right on the 45-yard line. A 40-yard punt, no return, and out will come the offense as they take over. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at the 45. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. The success there, Charles, coming on the outside of the field, the ground game. Curious to see if that continues as we progress. Yeah, we often talk about a variety in play calling and usually between run and pass. But in this case, with strictly the run game, you can be creative there as well. Run it inside, run it outside, keep the defense off balance. Oh, moving from his tight end spot there. Do you think that perhaps the play call was for him? They were looking good on second down, but now they're backed up five yards by the false start, and it's second and eight. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. But you look at this defense. They find themselves just a couple of spots outside of the top ten defending the pass, number 12 in the league. I think if you talk to their head coach, you'll get a nice answer about how much. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Oh, and one of the linemen on the other side has got it. And they take possession of the football and have it at the 36-yard line. The pocket collapsed around him. I know we talk about it a lot, but a QB has to have that sixth sense, doesn't he? He really does, and I know of one team at one point was training their quarterback with that time frame. And any time he didn't get rid of the ball within the, the right amount of time, they would blow a horn or blow a whistle to show him this is what that time is, just what you're talking about, training him to understand this is the amount you have, make sure the ball's gone. Didn't happen in this case. On first down, they'll go to the ground attack. Nifty down the numbers. There he goes. And finally, down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. A big run there. 29 yards and a first. He'll look to throw. And that's to the left sideline and incomplete. And he's missed now at his first four passing attempts. The rhythm is just not there to begin this ball game. They'll try again here from the seven on second and goal. Now a handoff running through the middle. They'll get this halfway home from the eight to the four on a gain of four. Defensively, I think they can smell a stop ball right around the five here brings up third. And I think what they've done is they put doubt in the minds of the offensive guys. What do we do? Because now you don't have a go-to play. Either side they pick, throwing it, running it, it won't be easy. Now on fourth down, out comes the field goal unit here. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. And the 13-year man puts it through. So he's been automatic to this point of the season, and he connects on the field goal there. And what a luxury it is to have a kicker you can depend upon, partner, because he hasn't missed all year long. Converts on that one as well. And kudos to you. You didn't jinx him. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. The Paris offense out to have another go at it. And Charles, if the season ended today, and it's not going to, we still have December yeah, left. Yeah, more football. 
We're only in November, uh, but they would be a wild card team, and that's great. They'd be in the playoffs, but you know they're trying to bump up to be one of those division leaders. That guarantees you at least one home game in the playoffs, and that's what you're really seeking. But there also isn't much margin for error for this team, right? Because right where they're sitting, a two-game losing streak could have them out of the playoffs. So they've got to make sure they continue to keep the momentum going. Absolutely. There's some sharks smelling blood in the water behind them. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. 45 yards rushing for him now. And he's carried the ball just five times. They'll look to throw here on first down. Got a man over the middle, and it's complete. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. A well-executed 22-yard gain. Those are the kinds of plays right there that show you why he's the number three man of the NFL in terms of receiving yards. It also tells you there's a full combination of what he's got going in his game. You name it, from route running to catching the football, that's why he's able to produce those types of numbers. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. When you look at this defense, they're just below the cut line for top half of the league, 17th in the NFL against the run. And this game for them is all about the line of scrimmage. Winning that battle, using their leverage, being the low man with power to take the offensive linemen and run them back into their own backfield and try and create some lost yardage plays. Out of the gun now on third down. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And oh, he's just going to be short here, barely. Maybe by a half a foot. It'll be fourth and inches. They'll set up to throw. Pass taken in by his big tight end. Touchdown! A great effort there. His first touchdown on the year. And the Caps' decision to go for it pays off with six points. So they get their tight end away from the line to the outside, and he works his way in for six. Tight ends are not just blockers anymore. I don't know how many more times we need examples, but here's a great one. Gets to the outside. They give him the ball pretty quickly, and they trust him to get those extra yards. And boy, did he come through bowling his way into the end zone after the nice catch. Extra point right down the middle. And that makes it a 7-3 lead. So the drive winds up going 75 yards in seven plays. And here comes a return from a few steps into the end zone. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled it to 20. They'll start on the ground here on first down. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Well, this defense, very strong in that victory from a week ago. It was a little bit enlightening talking with the defense coordinator about their performance last week because the feeling was that it was a good, solid performance. They did what they needed to do to get the job done and get the win, but definitely a few lapses that they're looking to correct. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. On third down, he'll drop to throw. And he is caught, and they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 18 yards and a first down. Well, a lot of times when you get a manageable third down situation like this, you have to think about your tight end, and he comes through for him, picking up the first down. They go play action here on first down. That's going to be complete on the sideline, but, you know, that throw left him no room to run, and the good footwork nearly all for naught. This is second and eight. One back in the backfield. He'll get the carry. Now he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. A yard in the wrong direction makes third down tougher. Third down and nine. Looking to throw. And that ball incomplete, nearly intercepted. Took a chance with that one. It'll lead to a fourth down. And they'll send out their punter now as he's on to kick it away. 
And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. Yeah, he was looking for the checkup bounce, didn't get it. That scoots all the way into the end zone now for a touchback. Here's the Paris offense ready to take possession. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated grooves. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown. And the last time out looking to repeat that in Charles' defense, they were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. After one, 7-3 the score on EA Sports. Ready for the second quarter, and it's our visitors with the football as they've got it with a second and one coming up. They'll keep it on the ground. It's Fisher, and he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. They'll run on first down. Fisher, and he'll be taken down right around the 34 after a pickup of only a yard. They work now on second and nine. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. And his throw is incomplete. This offense so far on third down, 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and nine. He's got his target. That's complete. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. Well, that's one way to convert on third down, picking up 26 yards. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. So on the other side of the field now, it's first and 10 as they've got things rolling on this drive. Back to throw here. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. Call it a gain of three on the play, and that'll bring up second down. They run the counter. Fisher. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop him. 84 yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here this first half. I hope we give enough respect to the big guys up front because they have been getting it done on this drive. The holes have been large, and they've been barreling through them, picking up first downs. And all the way down inside the five to the four. Ten more there and another first down. I'm not sure how much more evidence they need, partner, than to understand that if they don't start to slow him down, it's going to be a long afternoon here at the stadium because he is just shredding them at this point. And let's face it, coming into the game, they knew he would be the focal point of their attack. This is going to take an 11-man unit on the defensive side to start making plays. Second and goal from the one. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. Nowhere to go here, he lost the football. Second time in this game, Charles, the ball is squirted out from his hands. Luckily, his teammate was there to pounce on it. You're right. Got the lucky bounce, able to retain possession. You know, we often talk about the combine and why do we measure quarterbacks' hands. Is that really a big deal? It's for situations like this. Do you have the hands big enough and strong enough to hold onto the football while being jostled? Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. Good contain. No gain on the screen, and it'll bring up fourth down. You know, in boxing, they throw in the towel. In this case, you just kind of wave the white flag, and you think to yourself, if he can just get past that initial wave, he's got a chance to get free. But that screen, it was going nowhere from the start. It forces a fourth down. And his kick is indeed good. And they push the lead up to a touchdown now at 10-3. to three. So a nice kick there as they add three to the lead. And from what I've seen so far, Brandon, I think they've been the better of the two teams here in the first half. So even though you want the touchdown, I think that's a nice job there to put three points on the board. And we'll see a return here from the end zone. And he returns this to the 22. Here's the Anchorage offense back out now. 
Just a lone field goal for him so far, trailing 10-3 as they come up first and 10. Well, here's a quick throw to start the drive complete. So five yards here, five on the play. And it'll be second down. They'll drop to throw. And he's got his man on the out round. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. And they'll run on the inside handoff. And a five-yard gain gets him to the 42. If you're a coach, you'll absolutely take that run every time on first down because it really sets you up to go in a number of directions here on second. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. On first down, they'll go to the ground attack. Taken down at the 47-yard line. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on a third and three. Now here's a handoff out of the gun. And he'll be tackled about two yards shy of the line to gain. A one-yard pickup leads to fourth down. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. Getting set to go again as we look at the back, heading onto the field again. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. And he doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back. And that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. Ball at the 23, second and eight. Up the middle they go. It's Fisher, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. A yard in the wrong direction makes third down tougher. Third down and nine. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And that is too far out in front. He couldn't haul it in, incomplete. How about some applause for the defense there? They forced him to throw that one into coverage, and just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. Taken from just outside the 30. It's a 45-yard punt, then eight on the return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Out comes Anchorage to take over offensively. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? Well, no, no, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. He'll rifle this one deep right side. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Well, their first two drives only yielded three points. They might be thinking it's time to make something happen. Push the ball downfield and try and gain some points that way. Unfortunately, incomplete. Ellington has it, middle of the field. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. He's got his first catch here before halftime, and it goes for a first down. Again, he'll drop to throw. Looking left side, and it's complete. 
And they work this near the five. He'll be stopped at the six. That's another gain of 15 on back-to-back -back plays. A chance now to get even before the break as they come up first and goal. They'll look to throw again. This is caught. Now the offense going to use the first of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. They'll try to run this one in. And he is into the end zone for a touchdown. A great play there. His third rushing touchdown of the year. And the Elks are an extra point away from tying the ball game here in the final minute of the first half. So the toss play effective, even down here near the goal line. Yeah, and you're hoping the defense commits too many men to stop the run in the middle of the field and that your blockers can gain a little bit of an advantage. And when they do, foot race to the pylon. And this time, he had the speed to win that race. Extra point splits the uprights. And that is going to tie our game as we approach halftime. All level now at 10 apiece as the kick's away. And this will not be brought out. It's a touchback. This offense back to work now late in this first half. And they'll have a little bit of time to work with. 35 seconds until the break. 35 seconds. All that remains in the first half as they come up on first down. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Going right side here, and that's complete. Now the offense going to use the first of their timeouts as they get it right at the 32nd mark of this first half. Throwing middle, and it's complete. Now another timeout called for by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. And not a common sight, at least on this drive. A momentary setback, though, for this passing game that has been moving well this series. Good thing for them, though. Still two more downs to connect and try to pick up another first down. They take a shot downfield there, but it winds up falling incomplete. They decided the opportunity was there and launched a deep ball, but he was unable to get away from the defender. Couldn't create space, couldn't uncover at the end of the route, and that one winds up incomplete. Now yet another incompletion here as they fail to connect on third. That is certainly one way to frustrate a quarterback when there's extra defenders on the field. Dime package, lots of speed, no space to fit in the football. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. And with only nine seconds remaining, well, not much time, we'll see how they play this. Well, they're just going to run it here up the middle. An anxious moment or two there, but they do get him down. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. They'll throw now on the final play. Looking right sideline, that's complete. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. So we have reached halftime here at a good one. 10-10 is our score. As we send you to our EA studios in Orlando, here's Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. No. Halftime over, no problem with us. We skip right to the third quarter and continue this midseason contest. Welcome back. Charles and I settled into the booth ready for quarter number three. Taken at the goal line. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. This offense ready to go to begin this third quarter. Well, the first half, very even. I mean, really, in all facets, this ball game tied, Charles. So as we start the third quarter, curious to see what the second half brings us. Certainly am. I'm with you on that one. And we all know a lot of coaches from the NFL all the way down to the Pee Wee level. They love to spin it to their teams. Hey, we're starting a brand new shorter ball game. It's all even. Let's go out and seize it. This is ours. second down it's Fisher yeah he'll work free from one tackle but that's about all as he's taken down five yards now it's third and five they'll need five on this play to move the sticks out of the gun they'll look to throw and that is incomplete 
And so many times we look at the opening drive in the third quarter as a tone setter, and many coaches do emphasize it. And that's a strong performance there defensively to force incompletion and, more importantly, force a quick punting situation. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. Now both of these defenses have been stifling these last few drives offensively, just not able to get anything going. So what needs to change? I think a lot of the guys will go back and review, so to speak, because everyone has someone assigned to. How did each play work? Okay, what did, what did we use that kind of worked for us during this game? Try and get back to some of those plays, as well as the possibility of showing something you haven't shown already in this game and trying to change things up. Let's we'll see if they take the advice of Mr. Davis. A gain of 32 that time. You just had the feeling that sooner or later someone was going to come up with that one play. Neither team has really done a whole lot offensively, but here's one that pays off to the tune of big yardage, and it's one that could maybe get this group in gear. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. Hands it off out of the gun. Able to avoid him at the 40. And he's able to carve out about six there, down to the 37. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, Got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you take runs like that each and every time, won't you? And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. So first and 10 now from the 30. One back in the backfield. He'll get the carry. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. 92 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. Second down and in inches. And he will find his man on the outside. And he'll be out of bounds taking it just shy of the 10 at the 11 or the 12. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. From the gun, they'll try to run it. They'll get this down inside the 10 for a pickup of about three. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. Dancing to his left, and he'll slide to a halt here. Still a little shy of the first down marker. They'll wind up with positive yardage. It's a gain of three, but now it's third down. Back to throw. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And he won't get close. Only a yard, fourth and three. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. And his kick here is good. And they will take the lead at 13-10. So, C.D., maybe put a pin in that one as this game progresses. It's a field goal that gets him the lead here in the third, but, boy, you hate settling for three when you're that close to the goal line. Well, it certainly pains me to say it, but I do think it was the right call. Now, if they lose, you and I both know that'd be one of the things that gets second-guessed. Why didn't you go for it on fourth and goal? But I know the mindset was take the points, get the lead. And, by the way, if they went for it and got stuffed, they'd second-guess that, too. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And he's got his man in stride, complete. Stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. From the 24 now, here's second and five. Now a handoff up the middle. Fisher, and he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. Well, we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Up the middle they go. 
Fisher. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Here's a second and eight. They'll look to throw here. Hit from behind, and he's going to be driven down. They push him back eight yards that time on second down. So one quick, easy analysis about why they've struggled so far. They keep putting themselves in third and long situations. They just took another sack right there. And the offensive film session tomorrow may be a little longer than it normally is. <laughs> Not a lot of positive grades will be handed out thus far. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. They'll set up a throw. And incomplete on the deep ball. You get the sense that they're saying we're not playing up to what we're capable of and we're deep enough into the game that the early jitters are long gone, that they should now have some sense of continuity and be able to make some of these plays that they have not been doing so far. That'll be a 43-yard punt, just a single yard on the return. Here's the Anchorage offense back out now. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize, like going to the county fair. You don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. From the gun, he'll hand this off. And he'll run there for about five, up close to the 40. Boy, what would these guys be without his performance on the ground? That puts him over 100 yards now for the afternoon, and I tell you, he seems to be getting stronger as the day goes along. And they'll give him another shot here on the ground. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. There are a lot of different formulas to winning football, but one constant over the years, winning on third down. That pickup there was big because they had struggled throughout this one. On first down, they'll go to the ground attack. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. From the 43, here's a second and eight. He'll drop to throw. A throwing left sideline there, but it's incomplete. And when you're in a one-score game in the second half, now's not the time to force the football to places where you shouldn't. And that's a smart decision to just get that one out of there. He'll look to throw. Uh, he had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. One first down here, and that's all, folks. Good work by this defense to hold things in check and force a punting situation. And they bring their punter out there now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And the fair catch is taken at about the 13-yard line here. So possession goes over here on the punt, and the offense will come back out deep in their own territory. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Second and seven. Now back to throw. Quick hitter here. It's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets this football out shy of the 30 to the 29. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. Looking middle, and that's complete. And he'll be brought down on what's going to turn out to be the final play of this third quarter. Three quarters in the books. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here on EA Sports. Second down and three. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point. Just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. And this offense on third down today, just a 20% success rate at two of ten. They're up against a third and one situation. Able to find the open man. That's complete. He's to the 15. 
Touchdown! A big play there. His fourth touchdown on the year. And the Caps use the defensive breakdown to take the lead away here in the fourth. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts, <laughs> all right? Because once he took off, I mean, let's face it, that should have been done in big sky country. Aren't any speed <laughs> limits out there? And off he went. Glad I wasn't the one trying to chase him. Point after, right down the middle. And that will make this a four-point game. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Out comes Anchorage to take over offensively. And they will be looking to answer the touchdown their defense okay, just surrendered. Break. Still a good chunk of time remaining here in the fourth quarter and a chance to regain the lead in a tight one. They'll start on the ground here on first down. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. And they'll keep leaning on the running game. Back to the ground. Four yards to pick up. First down. Second to his prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook. Go play action. Toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation... Go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up the first down. Keep the sticks moving. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. A nice pick up there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. On first down, they'll go to the ground attack. And a good push there defensively as they stop him at the 48. A gain of just one. From the 48-yard line, here's the second and nine. He'll look to throw. He's going to rifle one deep left side. This is caught inside the 15. Touchdown. A great effort there. 52 yards. And the Elks answer back with a touchdown of their own to take a fourth quarter lead. Well, Charles, he's still a young signal caller in this league, second year in the NFL. And I don't know if last year as a rookie if he would have worked through his progressions like he did on that touchdown pass. I think you're right about that. We're seeing him grow up right in front of our eyes because when he went to his primary read, he recognized that they were all over that as so he continued to survey the field picked up another target, delivered a pass exactly where it needed to be. A very mature play for the second-year quarterback. Extra point right down the middle, and that gives him a three-point lead. This taken in right around the goal line. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Here's the Paris offense ready to take possession. We certainly have a good one on our hands. They're trailing after that last touchdown, but now a chance for this offense to try to snag that lead right back here in the fourth quarter. They'll come out throwing here on first down. He finds his man complete. That's Fisher. It'll be a gain of five, and it'll be second down. Now a give, right side. And now a fumble. The ball's out. And it looks like one of the DBs has it. And his crew will take over with a football at the 35-yard line. And he has been a workhorse for them in this game. And ball security hasn't been an issue until that point. Yeah, and let's face it. When he's going to carry the ball that many times, he becomes more and more of a target for the defense, knowing that he's going to be the primary guy. They'll just send more and more players towards him trying to make sure they knock the ball free. On first down, they'll go to the ground attack. 
They're going to snuff this play out behind the line. We have not seen that much today. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it. And the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. Third and five. And he'll run on the inside handoff. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. That'll back him up two yards and also bring up fourth. Well, that was one of the few times they've been able to contain him thus far. He's over 100 yards for the game, but he lost a bit off his total on that carry. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. This to swell the lead to six. And this one is right down Broadway. And the drive will wind up yielding three. So they get the three, but you wonder now, is that going to be enough? Excellent question, because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, it's a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because <laughs> they'd feel a whole lot better about their position. Well, and a touchdown in the other direction, all of a sudden, they're down. And all in all, a pretty solid return. Nearly got it to the 35. They'll mark him down officially at the 34. Here's the Paris offense ready to take possession. And that last turnover could have proven more costly, but their defense only gave up three. But now answering with a field goal doesn't do them much on this drive. They need to try and find the end zone. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. And they'll send the tight end in motion here. On second down now, it's Fisher. He'll get about four as he's past the 35 to the 38-yard line. Here's third and seven. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. And he's going to be brought down here in the backfield. That time, multiple defenders getting pressure. And it's a loss of six. On now is the punter as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. Fielded at the 20. A 46-yard punt, eight yards on the return. And they will take over first and 10. Out comes Anchorage to take over offensively. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And it pushes way forward to about the 32. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. They'll send the big tight end in motion right. And they'll give him another shot here on the ground. And the defense closes quickly there. He'll get maybe a yard to the 33. The offense on third down, just a 20% success rate at 2 of 10. This will be third and five. They'll set up to throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. It's a seven-yard gain and good enough to move the chains. And that's complete. It's Allington. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Now a second and two. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Over the middle, it's complete. They call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And they will stop him after a fairly minimal pickup. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation. And taking care of the football, paramount, and he got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. 
He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Oh, no, he lost the football. And now this ball picked up by the offense. But here in the final two minutes of the game, this will be blown dead. Only the fumbler can advance the football. So this will go back to the spot of the fumble itself. And he is going to have a first down here. And that should be the one that seals a victory. Second and goal from the sixth this time. One back in the backfield, he'll get the carry. And he'll take it into the end zone for a touchdown. A great play there with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Elks look like they're about to put an end to their two-game losing streak as they add on to their lead. And that right there is the definition of a statement drive. Here in the fourth quarter, trying to get to the finish line, and here... They were able to hold the ball for a long time and move it down the field. And how about them finishing it off with the touchdown run? Winning football 101, check that box. And this one's caught. And their fourth quarter lead grows by a couple more. So they go with a pass, and it works there on the two-point try. Charles, just in general, what are your thoughts passing versus running on two-point conversion? Situational? It is situational, and you have to know your team. What is your strength? Because so many people think you have to throw the ball on a two-point conversion, but the stats will tell you that running it is about as proficient. So know your team and go to your strength. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. The situation for him offensively as follows. Down by two touchdowns, a little under a minute to go. Their five-game winning streak hanging in the balance here. Oh, wide open, complete! And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. They absolutely had to take some chances downfield trailing here in the fourth quarter. So why not go four verticals, send the guys downfield, say make a play? And that's one of the favored routes of offensive coordinators. You know why? Because receivers can be open at any point running that route. They'll come up first and ten here. Looking to throw. Oh, and this one incomplete. The pressure got to him as he released it. And it's second down. Back to throw here. And his throw here is incomplete. Nice back-to-back -back plays defensively. They're stacking momentum now. One incompletion, two incompletion. They're going for more. Back to throw again. And the throw there going to be incomplete. That means it's just one last chance left, and this has to be a first down or a touchdown, or this game's over. The decision made for them. They've got to go. It's fourth down. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And as a result, possession switches hands. Well, they had to take one final shot at the end zone, but now things are looking really bleak. And I agree with that totally. You had to take the shot if they did score. You know, whether you call it a miracle or not, you line up, onside kick, get the ball back, throw one more in the end zone, who knows? Had to take the chance, it just was unsuccessful. Well, this was a very close ball game at halftime, Charles, but in the second half, that offense kind of kicked things into another gear, and they were able to pull away for the victory. And, Brandon, I think they're the type of team that just looked in the mirror and said, hey, a ton of pressure on, 
but we're the type of team that can flat out handle it. They stood up, stood up with confidence, and made it happen for a victory. So for Anchorage, they inch closer to respectability now at three and six on the year. And they will hit the road next week. Meanwhile, for Paris, they'll lose an important one here as that drops them to five and four on the season. And they'll get a chance to redeem themselves at home next week. So for Charles Davis and our entire crew, I'm Brandon Gaud. Next game, guess what? Charles and I will be here again. It's the NFL on EA Sports. Are you looking for high quality simulation football action? Then look no further than the greatest gridiron. Our league consists of 32 relocated franchises from around the world. We are the World Games of Simulation Football, where teams from all over the globe will compete on the greatest of gridirons. Hone your skills as a player or a member of a franchise coaching staff. Compete yearly for our illustrious Global Bowl, awards, accolades, and bragging rights as you climb the ladder of success and greatness. Are you a pro or just an average Joe? The Greatest Gridiron is looking for dedicated and passionate people to help build a league that emphasizes on trust, loyalty, and respect. Look at you. What makes you so great? This is the Greatest Gridiron where you can't stop greatness. Take flight. Take flight.